Hey everybody, how are you doing today? So I have here my 4570 and as you can see, I've installed a saddle ring. Now, the video I did actually for the install, I did a couple days ago, but as luck would have it, the intro, which I filmed separately, didn't work out so well. So uh, I'm going to cut this intro into that uh, install video and We'll, uh, we'll get on to that right away. So, <clears throat> this is a 4570. It's uh, one of my brush guns. It's a gun that I used when I was up north in a particular job. And part of my job was to assist um, wildlife conservation officers when they are dealing with dangerous uh, predatory animals, um, uh, particularly grizzlies. And uh, that's the gun that I like to, uh, like to carry. Um, I preferred this over a shotgun, but shotguns will work. So today uh, I'm going to cut into the video of, uh, of me installing the saddle ring. This gun has been checked by the way. I can see the bright orange follower and the chamber is empty. So after that video I'm going to talk about uses of this firearm in the woods and uh, uses primarily of the saddle ring. Why you want one, uh, how it's used, what it's used for and uh, that's, a, that's a video that I'm going to put up separately. So let's just get down to the installation right now of the saddle ring. Thanks. Not a lot of these, not a lot of firearms these days come with uh, saddle rings. But this company out of Wyoming makes saddle rings for your Marlin uh, firearms. So this company here it's called uh, Bear Tooth Mercantile out of Wyoming. Uh, I think it's Cody, Wyoming. So uh, yeah, check them out if you're if you have a Marlin. I don't not a rep for the company. I don't get anything from that uh, uh, company. I've uh, replaced, <coughs> I put four of these yesterday on four other Marlins, uh, two that I'm using for cowboy action and two that I use for hunting. Now I'm going to actually shut the video off and get rid of all the ammunition in the room and then bring in my uh, 4570 and show you how to install one of these because I think it's a great little upgrade. Let's uh, shut the video off for a second get rid of all the ammunition in the room, that's what you want to do first whenever you do any gunsmithing and I'll bring in the firearm and do the upgrade. Okay, we're back. So this is my 4570. I love this gun. It's uh, short, it's handy, it's pretty much a guide gun. It's a 1895 SBL and made by uh, Marlin. It's a new Marlin, so some people would call this uh, a Remlin, but uh, it, uh, it shoots well. It does not uh, cycle Hornady very well, but uh, just because of the size of the casing and the overall length. But to uh, all other um, uh, rounds that I've uh, tried to cycle in here, cycle, cycle really well. So uh, it came with a rail and with a uh, SX XS sight on it, uh, ghost sight. So uh, I've got that sighted in, I think, to about 25 meters. Also put on this uh, Bushnell uh, sight on top, this red dot. <coughs> I elevated it a little bit so I can still use my uh, rep, my uh, ghost ring sights. I like, uh, like that, the ghost ring sights for quick acquisition, but if I had time and put the, and to turn on the red dot, then Obviously, that uh, uh, I like that uh, as well. But both sites work really well. Both sites are sighted in at about 25 meters. So we're going to get to uh, installing this saddle ring on this firearm. First thing you got to do is, of course, prove it safe. So I can see that uh, chamber is empty, and I can see the bright orange follower. going to be removing this safety 
Now, normally I would recommend not recommend removing safeties, but uh, uh, on a firearm like this, it's not really necessary. Uh, they're great options to have. I know a lot of people hate uh, safeties. Proper sized screwdriver, and I'm going to remove the buttstock. That was that came right off uh, very well. I had it off before. That's, that's why. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to. There's I don't think I'm going to be able to catch that, uh, uh, but there's a little hole right there, and in that hole there's a little screw. We have to remove that screw, and as we remove that screw, there's going to be a spring and a detent underneath it. And that's going to hold this cross bolt safety in place. So I'm going to uh, position the firearm this way so that by gravity I'm not going to lose the detent I've uh, learned from experience. It does come with an Allen key, but I'm going to use a, a bit from my gunsmith uh, case uh, because I find that it works well and uh, it doesn't get in the way. So this comes out very easily. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand <coughs> over here and I'm just going to jiggle this out and I don't know if you can see that but there's a little detent ball with uh, with a spring comes right out. I'm just going to put that down on here. Now when I replace it I, I'm not going to need to put the spring in but it will work so I'm going to put it in anyways just so I don't lose it. Next thing I'm going to do is take out the, the safety and it goes out this way, it just pulls out, it will drop right out, should drop right out. And that's your safety. Now, what I want to do is take off this piece on the end and it just screws off with your fingers so you don't have to do anything special with it. You're going to put it in from the opposite way and you're going to orient it so that there's a little dimple on here where the ball goes and uh, the, uh, the open part will be facing you as you're, when you're holding the fire. Put that in and I want to screw the little cap back on the other side. So there's a little cap screw that you take off and you put that back on the other side. Now you're not done. As a matter of fact, this, this one actually uh, comes out quite a ways, but uh, it won't be secure like that. You can, um, if you're to leave it like that, you'll find that uh, it, uh, you'll just end up losing the heat. So it comes with a little screw that you want to put in the firearm with, uh, has a little detent on it. You don't need the spring. I, on the other ones, I put the spring in because uh, I just didn't want to lose it, you know. You do need the detent ball though, so my figure is the ball in, the spring in, a little hole there, and then put the new screw in. Tighten it up. 
start with your fingers, then end with the actual handle. To get it in to a certain distance, you want to twist this around so that it lines up with the ball, detent ball. You can feel it work itself in there and then tighten this up. You can put some Loctite on if you want. I haven't, but Probably a good idea. You have to crank it down in there very hard. Do you want it tight so it doesn't come loose? We take this off at a later date and put some Loctite on it. Okay, so got it on nice and tight. Next thing I'm going to do is Check to make sure that's nice and tight, doesn't go in and out. I put the stock back on. Slides in nice, nicely. So now that I've got the stock back on. Everything's in there nice. I'm going to function test it. Nothing's coming out. It's working. You're going to use your half cock safety from now on as your primary, primary safety. This ring is nice and secure. Use this with a one point sling. If you're walking in the woods for a while and you want to carry your uh, your rifle like this, say if you're actually um, if you're doing a job that I was doing where I had to look for dangerous animals uh, occasionally, this is a this is a great way to carry your your firearm uh, and have a little bit of the weight uh, off of off of your hands because this is a heavy gun and uh, you can bring it up quickly and go on to the deal. That's how you install saddle ring on a Marlin and uh, it unfortunately uh, takes out the cross bolt safety but uh, and you can keep all that. Uh, I keep it in the original little package so that if I ever want to or have to reinstall the cross bolt safety then I have that option. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed the installation video of the saddle ring and please click on the uses of the saddle ring for more information. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.